What's up guys, welcome back to another video. This is Alex and we're over here in the Let's Ride Garage and behind me I have, well now he's with me, this is my RockShox Revelation, uh, 140 millimeters of travel with that. Came stock with my Polygon CSQ T8 and uh, after the video where I went to Chipinque in Monterrey, Mexico, I noticed that it was messing up and that was this summer. The recording of this video today is November before Thanksgiving uh, 2022 and it's been a few months already like four months since I noticed that these sticks needed service so this is what I'm gonna be doing right now I'm gonna take this thing apart uh, replace the fluid clean up the seals and put it back together uh, I've never done this so wish me luck I will try to document as much as I can and uh, go from it um, but before I start as usual please subscribe turn the notification bell on if you're new here welcome to my channel I do a lot a lot of mountain bike DIY stuff and a few other things as well car mechanics things like that if you are back and you haven't also subscribed if you're back welcome back also turn the notification bell on so that way you don't miss any future content and if you want to support the channel check the affiliates I will link in everything that I use and my favorite products in the description below. You can also check my Amazon affiliate store or you can become a channel member and that option is already turned on on this channel. Other than that, let me get set up and let's get right into it. All right, so for this particular thing, I'm going to be using some different weights, fuels recommended by the manufacturing, uh, also some slick oleum or you can get tram butter, whatever's more convenient for you. We're also gonna need a few tools, Allen heads, things like that. Uh, the, thing, the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna release all the air, the air pressure on this thing, and then uh, we're gonna be draining some oil over here from the lower, so you might wanna get a little bucket or a container that will take all this oil so that way you don't make a mess. Might wanna get a few rags, things like that. Like I said, this is my first time doing it. I'm gonna link a video of the process that I'm following because like I said, this is my first time doing it and I had to do a little bit of research in order for me to actually be able to do this. And uh, I'm gonna try to tell you exactly what I did. So stay tuned. Let's get the air out. Let's get this oil out. We're gonna tap the bottom just like we did on the uh, SR Sun Tour when I increased the travel and then go from there. All right, so this side seems to be a five millimeter and you're gonna screw it out, but you're not gonna go all the way out because we're gonna have to tap this in so that it can remove the seal from here. And then on this side, I saw that you wanna go all the way to the left, counterclockwise, all the way to the left, all the way. And then there's an Allen head right here. All right, two and a half. Let me go ahead and turn this again. A little bit of screw. And then turn it. I guess it's gonna close the chamber or whatever the case may be. The key comes out as well, five millimeters. Let it hold by like two, three threads on both sides because we're gonna tap them in. There you go. And oil started coming up. That's what we wanted. Then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. There you go. This brake side looks like this, and the drive side in this case is red, and it has an O-ring on it. Looks a little bit different. Keep track of them. The stanchions, the lowers should be able to come out right now. Let's see if that's the case. Then we can look inside, and they look pretty, pretty clean. I'm just gonna wipe them off with the uh, lint free cloth or towels, napkins, whatever I have. And then uh, we're gonna take the seals out right here and then go from there. And the dogs are singing outside. Let me go ahead and take care of them. All right, so now I'm gonna be using some of my hook things right here and get these seals out and they are pretty darn dirty and dry. Oh my God, no wonder it was making that <laughs> bad noise. Came out too easy, so I'm gonna have to clean them up. All right, so I got some isopropyl alcohol and this is what I'm gonna be 
cleaning them wet. I'm just gonna put some alcohol on top of them. And I use the same towel to clean them up. I mean, they can they sell the kit to replace these seals all the way. I do not have that kit, so I'm just gonna clean them up. I'm just gonna let that soak in while I do something else. These internals, does the uh, butter or the grease that I'm gonna be put this lecoleum so I'm gonna clean this up really well and just like that look at that and then I'm also gonna clean that other side very well I mean I'm doing it my way a lot of hate comments might be down there I don't care this is how I'm gonna do it if it doesn't work then it's on me so I think I bought everything that I need Actually, what I need to see what we're gonna do to the uppers, cause I don't know, let's see. Before I do any more work, what I wanna do is take some of this chalk oil, this is five weight finish line. I'll leave affiliates in the description below. And I'm gonna leave these two seals. Look, by the way, look at the way this thing turned out. Almost like, I mean, they're supposed to be white brand new, but all the dirtiness is gone. I actually went and got a little bit of a bigger container. Should be plenty. I'm just gonna take that in there, put the other one in there, let them soak, and let this thing do its work. Now my next step is gonna be to remove the air chamber side. In many cases, you're gonna need a crescent wrench. However, this one is a little bit different. It actually uses a cassette tool which I guess is gonna work in my favor because many times the one with the crescent wrench, if you don't have the flat one, the flat uh, socket, you can end up scratching the, the, uh, the thing right here. And now with a cassette compatible wrench, I can just go ahead and turn the key and it should come out pretty easy. Now, while I'm here, I'm gonna try something that I have never tried, but I have had them for a long time, which is tokens. I know my writing style doesn't require them, but I'm a little bit on the heavier side. So I have three of them. I'm gonna go ahead and put two of them, see if I notice any difference. The reason we wanna pull this out is because we're gonna clean and re-grease everything inside here really quick, really good. So I guess this is loose and this comes out just like that. And as you can see, we have one token inside and that came from when I bought the bike because I never put this on. So we're gonna add two more and see how that performs. I'm gonna take this apart, take the O-ring off, uh, clean it, re-grease it and put it back in there. Now, since I have this out, I'm gonna take the rag that I wipe off the uh, dust seals that has alcohol in here I'm gonna clean this up really good. I'm gonna clean this up. First, dry them off. I'm gonna remove the O-ring carefully. Wipe this off really well. Now these tokens, they're tightened up with a, what it looks to be an eight. I'm gonna put in a total of three. We're gonna take our shrimp butter Put some rye here. We're also gonna take our O-ring and put, well it's not shrimp butter, but it's, you know what I'm saying. And Freya's barking. I'm gonna put some rye there. Then we can introduce this back in here. Lube it up really well. But don't lube it up too much because sometimes when you lube it up too much, it's useless. You just lube it up the right amount. You know what I'm saying? Now, this next part might get a little bit complicated because I don't think I have the proper tools to do it. We're gonna have to remove this retention uh, ring so we can pull in this side out. Clean everything up, re-wipe it, re-grease it, and put it back inside. Oh. 
needle nose pliers. Now to pull this out, I think I might need to put a little bit of air in here because the video that I'm watching, this shaft is out and in this case, this one is not. So let's see, I did the same thing when I did the sun tour. Let's see what happens. Don't do that at home. So now, this thing is out. We're gonna clean it up and re-grease it just like we did everything else. By the way, this does not look very pretty. It looks slushy, so I'm glad I'm doing this. All right, so we got this thing right here. I'm just gonna inspect the crap out of this, remove whatever we can remove, and re-grease everything. So I'm just gonna clean this up very well. Now use the alcohol wipe right here. Take the two rings out one at a time because I don't wanna mix them up, even though this one looks a little bit grooved. That has like a little channel, and this one is just a regular O-ring. I'm gonna take them both out. There you go. Wipe this off. Wipe everything. Wipe everything. Again, with the grease, be generous, but not too generous. If you know what I mean. Now something to note, if you notice that these O-ring, they're like cracking or like they're bad. I mean, you'll, you'll see, they're bad or something like that, then it's gonna be time to replace them. In this case, both of them are good, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of butter over here on the top. Make sure I have a little bit of butter everywhere. And I'm gonna clean the inners of the upper before I put this back in there. Now to clean the uppers, I'm just going to use the stick and make this go through there. Do it a couple of times. I might even do the same thing with the alcohol wipe one. Now to grease this up, you're gonna have to get a little bit creative because you're gonna put grease all over the inner tube. And I'm gonna be using this plier tool just to go from both sides because you don't wanna damage the inners. So let's see how we can do this being gentle. You gotta put grease in it. You gotta make sure you're gentle. So keep that in mind. Be gentle. So let's see. That didn't go that far. So I guess we need something longer. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So that we can go ahead and put in the retaining screw back on. I mean, not the retaining screw, but the retaining clip, the C clip back in here. Now, for this side, I was looking at the video and it seems like it's gonna be pretty complicated, but 
because I take the upper, this part out and the bottom part out. Uh, I'm gonna take this out. First of all, you gotta put it on the all the way to the minus position and then take your Allen head, unbolt this side up. Apparently this is also a 2.5. Everything's a 2.5 in this thing. Comes out. I'm glad I took it out because this thing is pretty darn dusty as well as the inside part right there. So I'm gonna wipe it off and put it on the side. Now this thing, I don't remember how it looks. So this, I even wanna make a mark over here. I'm just gonna remember that. Clean it up, put it on the side. 15, 16 socket works. A little few more turns. We're gonna clean this up, re-grease the seals, and there's gonna be some oil in there that I'm gonna take out. There you go. Now, something that I just learned, this thing was all the way pushed in. So I put this one back in. So when I pull this out, a lot of oil came out and squirted everywhere. So just be careful when it squirts, when this thing squirts, you don't want that to go all over the place. So make sure you take certain precautions, like some put, put something on the bottom. Now this thing also has two O-rings, one here on the bottom. I'm gonna remove it, lube it up and the one on the top as well, remove it and lube it up. And other than that, I'm not gonna do anything else to this because I don't think it's needed right now. And we're gonna go from there. So, again, there are different ones. This one has like a little groove and the other one is just a regular O-ring. course inspect them make sure they're good if they need to be replaced then go ahead and buy the kit when you lube it up get the hairs out of the way so otherwise it can get a little bit messy and we're gonna stick it back in there all lubed up now before we put this thing back on I'm gonna have to use 155 of weight five weight oil into that milliliters. I'll make sure you lower this. Otherwise it won't fit. Carefully, because I already put some in and I don't want that thing squirting on me. Not in this case. All right. Now, in order for this to go all the way back down, you have to open this up. So what I did is I just grabbed this thing because it wouldn't go down. So once I opened it up all the way, it went down as it should have. So now you can go ahead and tighten this up with no issues whatsoever. Click. Just to put it back with the way it was all the way to the closed position. Put this thing back on kind of where it was. Then put this back on. If you don't have a sag ring like this one right there, you can go ahead and get one and put it in there. Let's put in the other one. I'm not gonna make you wait because you just gotta play with it. All right, so my seals are in there. All nice and good to go. Now for my next step, I'm gonna put uh, butter up against the wipers I'm gonna be generous on it okay the other side on both holes you're gonna put grease on both holes because 
is needed. One might need more than the other, so just be aware of that. All looped up, ready to go. Now for the next part, before we, after we put in the stanchions back on, they're ready to come back on. Actually, we can do that right now. But we're gonna have to put in a little bit of oil on both sides, 10 millimeters. I'm gonna be using a syringe. So we want to have this. So you wanna make sure you're pulled out well, a little bit so you can give it, give it a space for the oil to go in. So this is 10. Put them on this side, why not? I'm gonna take 10 more and put them on this side as well. Now you can go ahead and get your two bolts. Squish this in, make sure it doesn't spill. You just want to be able to thread it in. Now this is in here already. So thread it in. Do the same thing on the other side. Now on the other side, if that thing, if you can't reach it, just put a little bit of air back in there and it'll push the rod back out. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. Or, let me try a different way. Open this up so that this thing can compress. Now it goes all the way in and you should have easy access to this other side. Should be able to thread it in, no problem. And just maybe see, maybe that was a problem. I did not have this unlocked. It was locked so I couldn't push it in. But now it's not locked. Now, put some air, you can see the threads right there. And you should be able to thread this in, no problems at all. And with this, my friends, the fork service for my revelation, which I should have done long, long time ago, is now complete. All we gotta do is clean it up really well. I still have alcohol in this one. So this cleans it up really well. Now we're gonna come to this side, put the key back in there, put the key in, all the way in, tighten this up before you start playing with the rebound. We can air this thing back up. I'm gonna put it at 100 PSI for now. Make sure it holds air. And then once I put it back on the bike, I'll set the sag. Because now it's gonna be a different setup than what I had before. Because now I have uh, three tokens instead of just one. Ooh, that's smooth. Like I said, a little bit of grease goes a long way. It's all the way open. That's locked. Yep. Did a good job, guys. All right, so we're done. Rock Sharks Revelation service is done. So basically, I just took it apart, put it back in there. Of course, cleaned everything up, re lube, re grease. Again, a little bit of grease goes a long way. I uh, should have done this a long time ago. It was a little bit time consuming, especially because I'm recording, but still, it is a tedious process, but I didn't want to take it to a shop and pay $120, $150 to get this done. So that's why it took me a while because I had the uh, SR Sontour Radon 34 hanging in there. So I was able to use that. 
which is still working perfectly fine. And I did, when I increased the travel, I cleaned everything up. Kind of like the same thing that I did to this one. This one is a little bit more involved, but I managed to do it. If I can do it, you guys can do it. Again, just get, make sure you get the correct oil weight specifications that you have to get. I ended up using 155 millimeters on the damper. I don't know if it's the damper side, it's the mechanical lockout side. 155 millimeters in there. And then from the lowers, once I put everything back together, 10 millimeters on each side, five weight oil. Uh, Slicoleum or slam, uh, shrimp butter, whatever you have in hand, whatever you can get your hands on, use that. Again, uh, a tedious process. I'll leave a detailed video of the guy that I follow uh, to do this setup. Again, there's one step that I couldn't do because I didn't want to mess the lockout bottom section. I skipped that play I skipped that but it's still I mean I relooped it so it should be good to go and plus all the all rings and everything was in pretty much really good condition so without further ado all I gotta do is put this thing back on the T8 but I do that off camera because I gotta do something else to the T8 as well I got another part that I'm gonna replacing but I'll, pro I'll probably do it on the same video whatever but other than that, that's going to wrap it up for today, guys. Thank you for staying tuned. Thank you for following along. Again, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. If you're back, welcome back. If you haven't, turn the notification bell on and hit the like button. Share this video. And uh, if you want to support the channel, you can become a member. That uh, option is turned on. Other than that, just check the affiliates in the description. I'll leave affiliates for the products that I use as well some of my favorite products as well as my Amazon store. You can buy there, it doesn't cost you anything extra but it does help the channel a little bit. That's gonna wrap it up for today guys and I guess I'll see you on the trails. Let's ride, goodbye.